guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. And this is all about a guy who made the classic mistake when he was young of getting married too fast without really getting to know the woman he was marrying. Then when he was married, gave pretty much his heart and soul to her, to a woman that was a taker, not a giver. And just one thing after another. And, oh, by the way, before he got married to her, there were a lot of red flags about her. For instance, the fact that she, when they got together and hooked up for the first time, she was cheating on him because she had a boyfriend back where she was living, okay? And obviously didn't care about that. Major sign. And uh, I'm going over this guy's email, guys, just to show you some very important lessons here so that when you're, for a lot of you guys that do relationships and all that, you got to understand that you need, it, these lessons are just so important. You need to really take your time and get to know the girl that you're with if you even consider getting married to her, okay, especially nowadays in 2021. I recommend you don't do it knowing what I know in 2021, how things are, how the laws are and all that, the, the current environment. But if you're going to do it, you really got to get to know the girl, okay, years, years and years and seeing her in all sorts of situations of how, what her real character is like. And of course, if there's major red flags, you pay attention to those red flags. Don't think that you're just, you know, no big deal. She'll be different with me, that type of attitude that a lot of young guys do. But the thing is this, guys, a lot of these mistakes are mistakes that people, guys make when they're young and they simply do not have the life experience or they haven't had someone to sit down and tell them these things. And that's why I do these videos. And that's why I appreciate guys like this sharing their stories where they obviously messed up, that way you guys can learn and it can help out more and more guys out there, you know, because there's just a whole bunch of things here. So I'm going to jump right into it. <clears throat> it starts off, Dear SSM, I've been a loyal follower of your videos and a subscriber to your channel for about a year now. Thank you, brother. I come from a Catholic, conservative, Midwest background where getting married is just what you do. It's part of the process that men have been conditioned to think until recently, as I think men are starting to see. That's pretty much most places that guys are conditioned to get married because, like, like he said right here, that's just what you do. You don't even question it. You don't even think about it. And then guys get into these bad marriages, and it's just like it, they're in this, this life sentence, they feel like, and they're trapped. They're trapped because the laws... They're trapped because they have kids, and they, they I'm gonna, and most of the time the fathers are good men, and they want to take care of their kids, so they're not gonna bail, you know. And just it's, and they don't have these lessons early on. This again, this is why I do this. But yeah, people are just conditioned because it's just what you do. I met my ex-wife in 2007, and she was my next door neighbor's daughter. My ex-wife was still living in Las Vegas at the time, but was home to babysit while her parents were out of the country. At this point, red flag number one was broken as she proceeded to cheat on her boyfriend at the time with me. When I called her out on it, she said, I don't care about him right now. So, okay, whatever. Major red flag. Now, I want to know, did this guy here who told, who's sending this story, was he aware that she had a boyfriend when they hooked up, when she was cheating, okay? Because be, being fair here, if he willingly hooked up with her knowing that she had a boyfriend, I mean, that's not cool, okay? And that could, some of what happened, it could be some karma there. You know, I'm, I'm I'm just being fair here. You know, so I tell you guys, if you if you you relationship guys or guys that date and hook up and all that, if you meet a girl and you know she's got a boyfriend or worse yet a husband, don't do it seriously. Because aside from the fact, in my opinion, it's the wrong thing to do. Mark my words, karma will always come back to bite you in the ass. It may take 20 years, but it will come back in some fashion for what you're putting out there in the world. A lot of people think I'm a little nuts about that type of thing, but that's just, it's just been my life experience. It's just not cool. So, But what this guy go through, uh, he goes through later on, believe me, it's, it's way bigger price in terms of the karma department for this. But I don't know if he knew or not, so you know it can go either way. But anyhow, the point was, she cheated on the boyfriend, didn't care. Instead of just breaking up with a guy, she still just just didn't care. That's a major red flag. If she'll do it to that guy, she'll do it to you. Anyhow, so okay, whatever. At the time, I was much younger, blue-pilled, beta male, that when the relationship became closer, I asked her, you know, once a cheater, always a cheater, how can I be assured that you won't cheat on me? So this guy had, you know, some comments. He knew enough at that point to realize that that type of thing could happen. And listen to her response. She says, uh, her response was priceless. As she said, if I had a man like you, I would never cheat. 
Yeah, okay. But me at the time believed her and we were married in November 2008. So he met her in 2007. They hooked up. It was with her, even though she had a boyfriend, and they got married one year later. Now I don't know if he met her in early. I don't know if he met her in early 2007, and they got married in late 2008, like he says here. But the point is, it wasn't a whole lot of time. It should have been years, many years. But what happened happened. Immediately, as in the immediately as in the honeymoon. Red flag number two, she wanted kids, which surprised me as I told her I wanted to wait three to five years before having children. That makes sense. Wait a number of years. Actually have a good time together because, you know, you're, you're ha ha, you have a good time together, you're married. But you know what I mean here. Actually spend some time together, do some things as a couple and all that. And also, this guy can then save a bunch of money, be in a good place financially to provide. But again, he, as you're going to see here, is a giver, and she's a taker. And this guy, many times over and over again, as you're going to see here, he's going to do what she wants to do to make her happy. And guys, whenever you are constantly giving to a woman to make her happy and doing going against what you want to do, it's never going to go well for you, okay? Because she's going to lose respect for you, okay? Guys that are pushovers, that are easy, are to get no respect and will be treated with no respect. And oftentimes, they're either dumped or cheated on, which you're going to see. She incessantly asked, and I finally gave in. Big mistake. And on the day before Thanksgiving 2010, she told me she was pregnant. Honestly, I wasn't very excited because I wasn't ready, but made myself ready real quick. Say he wasn't that excited. His Trust your gut, guys. Always trust your gut. And what did his gut say? Eh, not that excited because he wasn't ready. And he went against what he wanted to do. My daughter was born on August 20th, 2011. At the same time, me, being a small business owner who had a six-figure income, was working harder and harder at work and doing everything at home when not at work because my ex-wife was in, in way over her head and could not care for the house and the child as she promised that she would. I did all the cooking, cleaning, maintenance at the house, grocery shopping, all while working 70, 80 hour a week in a very stressful environment. All right, that's a bunch of bullshit, okay? He's working 78 hours a week to take care of the family because obviously she's not working. And he's still doing, as he, as he said there, all the cooking, all the cleaning, all the grocery shopping, all that type of stuff. I get that a newborn is very demanding and stressful and no sleep and all that. Believe me, I don't have kids, but I got family that has kids. I got friends that have kids. They've had babies, obviously, then became toddlers and, you know, little kids and all that. Okay, so seeing what they went through, hearing what they went through, I get it's hard. But it's not so hard that she can't do other things, okay? But again, this guy's a giver. He's a pushover, and she's taking full advantage of it. You can't be that way, guys. He should have he should have done many things that, that he didn't do. But in a situation like this, drew a line in the sand and said, look, I'm working 78 hours a week. You're the one that wanted to have kids this quickly so you're gonna have to up, up step up step up and make it work and help do more things okay i'm not doing all this shit but he didn't or at least that's just seems like he didn't do that you gotta stand up for yourself guys continues in 2015 my son was born and i immediately got a vasectomy which she was not happy about turns out she wanted to get me on the hook for as many kids as possible she wasn't happy about him getting the vasectomy what about that whole line uh What's that word about my body? I can't think. I can't think of it right now. It's early in the morning on a Saturday here. But, but my life, my body. I don't know what the hell it is that that line the women use. Okay, my body, my choice. That's it. Okay. What happened to my body, my choice? It's okay for them, but if a guy he, he wants to get a vasectomy because he doesn't ha doesn't want to have any more kids, well then she's bad. He's the bad guy. It is a very good thing he didn't have the vasectomy. I mean, it's a very good thing he got the vasectomy and didn't have any more kids. He says, life continued in just a horrible fashion as I was not happy. Life continued in this horrible fashion as I was not happy, nor was I unhappy. Okay, he was just kind of in la-la land. It just sucked because I was working 18 hours a day with no break. In the summer of 2018, things really took a turn for the worse as she met some friends of hers that had children that were the same age as mine and liked to play together. 
my ex-wife began staying out all hours of the night with these people and, and was engaging in what my therapist called an emotional affair. And she was constantly talking and texting with the husband about the marriage and how I work too much and I can't give her what she needs. What a load of shit. This guy's busted his tail, like he said, 18-hour days to provide for the family and her. And, and by the way, I haven't heard a thing about her having a job or providing in any way because this, this is 2018. So they got married in 2008. So it's been 10 years of marriage. Oftentimes, this is where a lot of the things go wrong after about a decade of marriage. Right in line, the typical timeline. Uh, the first kid was born in 2011, so it looks like uh, the first kid is seven years old and the other kid is three years old. Okay? So at this point then, she could definitely have at least a part-time job or be doing something. I certainly hope at this point she's cooking and cleaning and doing all the other stuff that you mentioned early on that he was doing all of, I might add. But, uh, and then by the way, this whole part of her being out hours of the night, when was he drawing the line with her? When was he laying down the law saying, no, 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 you're not doing this crap. You're not going to be out all hours of the night. We're a family here. You're going to be here helping out. As you can see, he, he, no doubt, he doesn't mention it, but I'm reading between the lines here. He wasn't doing that. He's a giver. She's a taker. She can see that she can get what she wants with him. He, he caves a lot and goes against what he wants to do to make her happy. Typical you know, how a uh, house hu typical husband crap that you see in the movies and TV. And where does it get him? He says, Oh, real sorry. I'm working 80 hours a week to support you and the kids. I found he then found phone records of him call of him calling her for 27 minutes, 33 minutes, you name it, all while I was at work. But she says she never cheated. Yeah, sure. Okay, she never cheated, even though, guess what? Their whole foundation of the relationship was based on her cheating on her boyfriend with the guy telling this story. Okay, yeah, right. Uh, she continued to hang out around him and one of those... and one, She continued to hang around him and one of the two of us had to go. I filed for divorce and she pulled the old silver bullet of divorce and tried to get a civil protection order on me uh, grading her exclusive rights to my home and the kids. It was obviously and thankfully declined even though she told the court of law that I had uh, threatened to do things to her and the kids. That's freaking psycho. So, this this guy has been busting his butt for years. Good for him for saying, that's it, I'm done here, getting a divorce. And she's trying to say to the court that he was doing all these horrible things and she felt in danger and all that. Unbelievable. He says, had I not been protected by the trust and prenup, I would have literally lost 22 years of hard work. That's why you get the, the, the prenup and that's why, you, guys, you take all these different things you got to do to protect yourselves. If, indeed, you get married. I'm sure many of you guys who watch my videos have watched enough to know and also listen to the story here that you're in no rush to go out and get married anytime soon, knowing what you know in today's environment. He says, uh, nowadays, this gets to the good part of the story, guys. So eventually he gets divorced. He says, nowadays, I'm living my best life ever. Have a nice house and all my toys, and she gets she got no money or assets other than her crappy 2007 Tahoe with 200,000 miles on it. Cool, keep it. She did get full custody of the kids with limitations, even though I am far more of a fit parent. She has no high school diploma and lives in a home purchased by her dad. How the hell does she not have a high school diploma? I mean, maybe I'm reading that wrong. Maybe she doesn't have a college degree, but no high school diploma? Why the hell did you marry this chick? I mean, come on here. Uh, yes, I've, I've known a few smart people in my life that didn't have a high school diploma and they got their GED, certain bad circumstances they had growing up and they made something of themselves. But come on, you're no high school diploma? What the hell is she going to do? Anyhow, no high school diploma and lives in a home purchased by her dad. I have a wonderful home, I, a business, and can take care of these kids way better as proven and documented in court, but the family court system is so sexist and biased that unless she is literally in jail, the men get no rights. Exactly. This guy's way better parent, provider, all that, but at the end of the day, they still, the kids still went with the mother. And these are perfect examples why I tell you guys, just be aware of these things if you do decide to say I do. He says, I gave up everything I had for family and was crapped all over by my ex-wife. I encourage all men to never get married as there is nothing in it for you and you're playing Russian roulette with your assets. I want to share my story with many young people as I can to help prevent this from happening to another man. Well, thank you. 
Thank you for taking the time to write this email, and this will help some guys. I mean, a lot of times these videos, you know, it's just constantly listening over and over and over again, letting things sink in, absorb, to help guys gain knowledge. And that way it gets to the point that if guys are ever in a situation that in other times they might either not know what to do or they may have to stop and think, they they hear so many of these stories that just boom, they know exactly what to do. So that's why it's so great that you guys help out by sending me your stories and helping other guys out. So that, that way, what you went through, there's some silver lining to There's some good here, and that's awesome. And I appreciate you doing this, bro, and all you other guys that send me your great stories. But notice he said right here, I gave up everything that I had for family. It was crapped all over by my ex-wife. This is what happens, guys, when you give everything you have to someone that doesn't give a shit, to someone that's a taker. And you, uh, this goes back to the whole getting to know someone because in the early years, and I'm saying years, of a relationship, for you guys that do marriage and all that, in those early years, you can find out if she is a giver or a taker. If she is someone that's just going to just take, 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 and, and get you to go against your intri- what you want to do and all that, that says everything. But a lot of guys think that, hey, this is as good as it gets. I'm never going to get anybody better than her. She's the hottest girl I've gotten yet. She's great in the sack. All these number of excuses and reasons guys give to overlook all the bad behavior and bad treatment and figure, hey, that's just how it is because, you know, my parents weren't that happy or all the other parents I knew growing up weren't happy. You see what I mean here? You got to do, you got to pay attention to all these things, guys. That's why it takes years before you actually take the plunge, as I call it to put a a ring on her finger and say, I do. If you do that, you got to do what's best for you guys. And if you are going to do relationships, because I, you know, relationships or marriage even, yes, you got two people in it, but you have to stand up for yourself. Okay. And, And women will not respect a guy that does not stand up for himself. And women test women. It's not like they're going to test you one or two times and say, okay, he passed the test and that's it. No problem. No, women are always going to test. Okay, you can be with your girl for ten years, and she's and, and you can do everything right in her view in terms of being strong and masculine, and taking charge and all that. And she could test you on a Tuesday. Well, you can bet your ass she's gonna be testing you on a Friday to make sure you're still as strong and masculine and ha- the type of guy that she really wants. And if you fail those tests, like when they try to get you to do things you don't want to do. Then all of a sudden, she starts to lose respect for you. And then there's more tests and more drama, more BS. So you got to understand that. Do what's best. And I I know I'm going on and on about this, but this is a very important part to me. You got to stand your ground. You got to do what you want to do, you know, and you got to, you can't go against what you want to do. And just be aware of this. And when you give, constantly give to a taker, they're going to take, take, take. Anyhow. He says, guys, these women are not, and he wrote not in giant letters, are not what they are or cracked up to be. And if you've been married for any length of time, likely the person she is, and possibly you, for the matter, are not the same person as when you were married. Yes, that happens all the time. People get together, and then eventually their interests tr- change, their 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 politics change. He's going to mention this. Religious views change. You, 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 you know, you're not the same people. So it's like... Eventually, this is why you see so many couples that it's, they're, they're, they're like zombies walking around. They don't look very happy when they're out at all. Maybe they had a good thing going early on, but just they're completely different people. They got nothing to talk about. And, you know, it's, and it is a shame in one sense when you had two people that really had a great thing going. Okay, because it's rare. But then they just, and that's why one of the many reasons why I just don't think marriage is worth it nowadays because people are living longer and eventually they run out of things to talk about. There's no interest. They're not hooking up. It's better to part ways and then start over and be with somebody that you actually really click with. If indeed, that's what you want to be. Or don't get married at all and you're, you're, you do relationships if that's what you do. You're, you do your you do relationships, that's your thing, but eventually when they run its course, okay, you can part ways and move on, but you're not you know, legally bound. He says political views, religious views, different friends, and people come in and out of your lives and can all affect the marriage in a negative way. Exactly. So thanks, SSM. So anyhow, I know it went a little long there, guys, but again, this is all about teaching and helping guys out. So there you go. Like I said in the beginning, you got to pay attention to the red flags. Always, guys. And with the whole cheating thing, remember, as it said here, and I've done this countless times, as the saying goes, once a cheater, always a cheater, okay? It may take 10 years, but it's going to come back in the situation when she stops being happy, when things aren't going the way she wants them to be, instead of just ending the situation that a healthy person would do. Emotional affair, physical affair, whatever you want to call it. And the other, of course, about the lesson about 
don't being a giver you give too much to a taker you can't do that so but anyhow guys hope you enjoyed that i really do hope this will help some people out i'm sure it will but anyway again thanks to the guy who sent me this story that's great that you're in a great place now and doing well i'm sure this guy from what he said there he'll never make that mistake again but you were young. You didn't know. But now you're in a great place. That's awesome. And I hope things are great with you and your kids. So, all right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.